Good afternoon and welcome to Windsor College's Open Day. My name is Amanda Dunn and I'm the Assistant Principal overseeing the sixth form provision at both Windsor and Strode's Colleges. We're very disappointed not to be coming to you in person, but hopefully this afternoon we'll make up from that. This afternoon starts with a presentation from myself and then there will be presentations that you can log on to and listen to from each of our heads of department who will cover information about each of their areas and the different subjects offered within those. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions, which hopefully we will be able to answer this afternoon, or if not, get back to you individually in person. Joining in me this afternoon is Fiona Carthy, who will be monitoring and sourcing your questions and hopefully answering some of those for you this afternoon. So, as I said, thank you very much for joining us. We are part of the Windsor Forest Colleges Group and we are really proud of Windsor College. It's a fantastic place to be. As students, you benefit from expertise of staff, both support and teaching, who are specialists in the sixth form provision. We're delighted that we can offer over 25 different A-levels and a number of different level two and level three BTEC courses, as well as three new level four UAL courses and an access to science course. It's a wide range of provision that we offer and hopefully give everybody who's considering sixth form education something to choose from. You have the ability to mix and match A-levels with BTECs, maximising your potential for UCAS points, whatever your desired outcome may be. So whether it's university, further education, an apprenticeship or work, I am confident that we find something for you at Windsor College to help you progress and to help you fulfil your ambitions. We're really proud of our facilities and as I said, being sixth form specialists, we know exactly what students need to help them be successful. We're delighted with our ever improving results, 95% A-level last year and 100% with our BTEC pass rate at level three. Our students work hard, they know that studying hard, working hard is going to reap benefits and successes. And we are really proud of everything that they do and what they go on to achieve. We understand more than anything else that the transition from school to college or post-16 education can be challenging. It's exciting. It offers lots and lots of new opportunities, but it can also raise challenges and problems for students to overcome. We, as sixth form specialists, know exactly what is needed to help students develop the study skills and the personal skills that they need in order to be successful. We know what it takes to progress at sixth form, and we are delighted to have been recognised by our most recent Ofsted inspection of absolutely providing that support. So in 2019, the end of the year, inspectors came to visit us and said that our learners develop a good understanding of a wider society, that they benefit from the good advice they receive and that they succeed. We're delighted with the outcome of our Ofsted inspection and really, really thankful for all that it benefits us. It supported all the efforts that our staff and our students have been making together over the last few years and recognises that. We are focused on every single one of our students. We see them as individuals and we are absolutely committed to ensuring that every single one is successful. We know that that journey is going to be full of bumps and challenges, but we are there to help them. Our stress lie in our staff being bold and ambitious and being committed to ensuring that every single one of our students achieve the most successful outcomes for them. So, why come to sixth form? A vibrant environment, a wide variety of subject choices, enrichment, success, and we are delighted by everything that our students continue to achieve. If you're interested in studying locally after your time at Windsor, then why not continue with us? We are running level four courses in a variety of different subjects with links to the universities on the screen in front of you. So Reading, 
West London, Bucks New University. In addition to the courses there, I'm delighted to announce that we will be running level four courses in media studies and art and design from this September. A really great addition to our portfolio and all of those courses will now be based at Windsor. So performing arts, media and art and design will be based at Windsor. Beyond this, I'm really delighted that so many of our students go on to fantastic universities. So Royal Holloway, Warwick, Southampton, Portsmouth, benefiting from the success and support that they have received to enable them to go on. But many of our students go on to hire apprenticeships, take training programmes or go into the world of work. And one of the benefits of being at a sixth form college is that we are adept at meeting the needs and the requirements of every single one of those students, whatever their outcomes have been. Windsor is a small sized college, but I actually think that's part of what makes it unique and special. We are a family and we are a community and we are absolutely committed to retaining that. And that's what we provide for our students. We sit in the heart of Windsor, bang smack on the high street, and we recognise that we are very much a part of the Windsor community. We encourage our students to see that in exactly the same way and to participate in that community, whether through volunteering, through performing with the local community or work experience and other community projects. We pride ourselves on the high quality individual support that we provide and on the ethos of being a sixth form college with everything that that entails. We recognise that grades are really important. They are going to help you progress onto your next steps, but it is everything else that is sitting beneath that and supports you to ensure that you are successful and move on to that next step. At post 16, your programme of study, as it's called, will shrink. For most of you, you will be doing somewhere in the region of eight to 10 GCSEs. Amongst which I'm sure there are some subjects that you are currently wondering why on earth you chose as a GCSE option. At post 16, that choice narrows. So for those of you considering an extended BTEC diploma, that narrows to one subject that you will be specialising in. For those of you considering A-levels or extended certificate BTECs, that condenses to three subjects an opportunity for you to really specialise in the things that you are confident in and really sure about. Your programme study is made up of face to face contact with the teacher in class teaching, but it is also made up of a tutorial session with a specialised individual tutor who will monitor a student's programme and deliver our tutorial programme. It's also made up of independent study time and for every hour that a student does in the classroom, in order to maximise their opportunities of success at level three, we would be advising that they undertake the same amount of time outside of the classroom in independent study. Much of that work will be set for them, but there will also be opportunities to expand, to research, to investigate, to go above and beyond, to develop their skills and to maximise their opportunities. There are enrichment opportunities and there is career support. And again, all of those things are very specialised to sixth form provision and the post 16. Our entry requirements. For those of you wishing to study an A-level programme, we do ask for a minimum of five GCSEs at grade four or above. Please do make sure that you are paying close attention to our website and to our prospectus when it will be published in the new year. There are individual requirements for many of our subjects, so please do make sure that you are paying attention to those. But if you would like more information on that, please do contact us and we can provide that information for you. For those of you considering a level three BTEC programme, we are looking for a minimum of four GCSEs at grade four or above. For both of those, the most important subjects GCSE English and GCSE Maths. If you are unsuccessful in requiring either of those two, it will impact on your progression and you will be required to undertake a reset. I promise you that's not me being me, that is a government requirement. So you will need to be doing that. My advice, do everything that you can now to absolutely 
absolutely maximise your chances of achieving that grade four or above in your English and maths. For those students who aren't successful in achieving their four GCSEs at grade four or above, we offer a range of GCSE and level two BTEC progression programmes. They run for a year and are a foundation year to enable students to progress onto a level three pathway. We offer three options in that at the moment at Windsor, the GCSE science pathway, level two creative media and level two performance production arts. Again, for more information about those, please log on to one of our subject department presentations after this one, or you can ask any questions about it at the end. I'm sure most of you know that education is going through lots of changes, even more so given the current climate and the current circumstances. All A-levels are now two year linear courses, it means that all assessment happens at the end of the second year even for those courses where there is minimal amount of coursework. New Level 3 BTECs have slowly been joining us and this year sees even more of our subjects moving over to the new specifications. This means that they are no longer 100% coursework assessed and each subject will have an externally assessed unit. For most, that is an examined unit, but for some it is a controlled assessment. These are staggered across the course of the two year and all level three BTEC courses are also two year courses. Assessments are staggered at different points during the year and are worth roughly 25 points, so less than A levels, but again, something to consider. The majority of students will study three main subjects, as I've already said, but for those students coming in with half or more of their GCSEs at grade seven or above, we will consider four subjects. Our advice to those students is always to think really carefully about why you want to do four. University places are always offered on the basis of four good, three, sorry, my apologies, three good A-level grades rather than four. And an alternative option is therefore for students to consider the extended project qualification. The extended pro project qualification, or EPQ as it's called, is worth half an A in terms of UCAS points and is a fantastic opportunity for students to specialise and investigate an area that they are particularly interested in. It doesn't necessarily have to be related to an area that they're studying as part of their curriculum study programme, but it could be. It's an opportunity for students to demonstrate the skills that universities and many employers are looking for. Research skills, commitment, presentation skills, analysis, evaluation, an opportunity to produce either an extended essay or a practical piece of work alongside a project book, a logbook that monitors what you have done and considers how successful you have been. So lots of opportunities. My advice in choosing your subjects for the future is to think about what you enjoy. What are you good at? Half the success, half the key to being successful is to choose things that you're good at and that you enjoy. But think about what you want to do in the future as well. Are there particular subjects that you need? Think about how those subjects fit together. The best programmes are ones where subjects support each other and fit together neatly. Please don't choose something because your best friend is doing it. It's never a good idea, I promise you. And please don't choose something because you think it's going to be an easy option. At post 16, I'm afraid there are very rarely easy options. All have their challenges, whether it's an A-level or a B-Tech. All will have high expectations of you in terms of demands of your time and your effort, both inside and outside of the classroom. So please think really carefully about what you want to do. Please do lots of research. Come back and visit us in the autumn term when hopefully we will have our doors open to welcome you all in for our autumn term open evening. Please take the opportunity this afternoon to listen to one of our departmental presentations with more details about the subjects and please take the opportunity to ask us any questions. Our aim is to help our students to be successful, to create futures that are going to be vibrant, but we understand that that is not just about their core programme of study, it's about everything else that wraps around it.
So whether it's an opportunity to take part in one of our many trips, visits, engage with one of our visiting speakers, whether it's our local MP or whether it is Holocaust survivor or somebody performing for Independent Women's Day, there are lots of opportunities. It may be that your preference is to join in with our performances. It may be that you feel you can have a voice in our student union executive. But whatever it is, there is something there for you. It is also about taking part in many of the other aspects of our life. And that's why we are, again, specialists in providing the level of support that students need to be successful at post-16. So whether that is support with work experience, whether that is support with applying to university, whether that's support with applying for apprenticeships or finding work placements, we are on hand to provide that with specialist teams working in our tutorial provision, our learning support, our careers advice, and offering a range of events and workshops to help students be successful. It is there. So from the guidance from our student services teams on bursaries and financial support, to the learning guidance from our learning support teams offering support with study skills, time management, some of those core things students really benefit from. It's therefore really important that you choose your courses carefully. We're delighted to be able to offer guaranteed applicant status to all those students who are currently attending one of the schools listed on our screen. That means that we will prioritise your application to us and help to pro process that through quickly. However, please don't worry if your school isn't listed on the screen. We are still open to all applications and we welcome applications from all students. So please do get your applications into us as soon as possible. So what happens now? Our admissions will be opening shortly for applications for September 21. However, we are still accepting and looking at applications for September 2020. So if you are still looking for a place for September, and are undecided about what you want to do, please get in touch with our admissions team who will arrange for you to be interviewed by one of our specialist team. There's then an interview and that's a chance for you to discuss your programme study, your subject choices, what's going to work well, what's going to fit together well and best suit you in terms of your skills, your attributes, as well as your career intentions, your long term ambitions. Hopefully, we will then be able to make you an offer on the basis of your predicted grades and on the subject choices that we can offer you here at Windsor. That will then progress on to enrolment. This year, we are currently working to ensure that we can enrol all of our students and provide them with the excellent service that we have been doing so for the past few years. It means taking a little bit more time to ensure that social distancing is in place and that all of our students and staff are safe and able to protect their futures and move forwards in the best way. And we're looking forward to welcoming our new group of students in to join us in September of this year. But if you are looking for a starting point in September 2021, as I said, we really hope that you will join us at one of our face to face open door events in the new year. Come along and meet the team, myself, Heads of department, student services, learning support team, the admissions team, we will all be there to hopefully welcome you to Windsor and help you make your journey with us a successful one. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, hopefully we will be able to answer those this afternoon. But if not, we will do our best to answer those questions, to direct you to the right people and to get back to you. Thank you very much. Isabel. Thank you, Amanda. We've had lots of questions coming in, so if you're ready, I'll start to work through some. Um, I am replying and publishing them um, on, the, on the pages as well. Um, uh -huh. Is there a dress code at the college? Um, there is no formal dress code in the sense that we do not expect our students to wear office based dress as I know many sixth forms do. We do, however, ask our students to be respectful in their dress code. So no inappropriate dress. Um, and I would include in that T-shirts, shirts, baseball caps that have slogans or images that may cause offence to others. Um, 
clothing that is too revealing, we would again ask students to remember that they are in a learning environment and not a social environment. But beyond that, no, we have a fairly tolerant attitude towards dress code. So things like piercings are OK. Yes. Yeah, that was a specific question. <laughs> yeah, no, no, don't have a problem. The only thing I would say for that is um, there are some subjects where obviously that may be a consideration from a health and safety perspective, but that would be the case wherever you were, whether that were in work environment or a learning environment, um, just to make sure that piercings don't get caught up. So the same would apply if you had long hair and you were doing a science experiment, for example, we would be asking you to tie it up. OK, we have a number of questions around um, COVID and the travelling to college and being safe okay. at college. Um, okay. Around, particularly around things like group work and okay. um, and travelling to college. OK, so as things currently stand, we are like all educational establishments working with the government guidelines. Um, we are currently reviewing our timetables for September to make adjustments so that we will be within peak travelling times. And we will, of course, make sure that any guidance on social distancing is in place and that would apply for group work or class based work. Um, I'm afraid I can't give you more details on that at the moment because the guidance is changing on a weekly if not daily basis. Um, but we will continue to publish guidance on that and when students who are joining us in September arrive for their induction sessions we will give very clear guidance about what the timetable is going to be and how that will be managed. Thank you. Somebody's asked a question about being able to um, add an A level. They're, they're applying online uh -huh. um, for a level two course and want to also add um, uh, an A level. Um, is, what's the best way for people to do that? OK, um, it's highly unusual for some, somebody would not generally speaking combine level two and level three. So I would suggest that that person directs, if, we're, if they're happy to give us their details, Fiona, and we could pass that on to admissions and ask the admissions department to get in touch with them. But generally speaking, people do not mix and match level two and level three qualifications, I'm afraid. Uh, but if they wanted to add uh, an, an A level to a level three option, can Again, they do that online or is that done later on? Um, it depends on the level three option that they've opted to do. So if it's an extended diploma, it will probably say no, because that's a full programme of study. I would suggest the best option for those that individual is to contact admissions. We can add it at the point of interview, so we can make an adjustment to somebody's offer at that point. If they have particular concerns, I would suggest contacting admissions directly. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to answer questions and read them out okay, at the same time. <laughs> um, I'm just going through um, one moment. What about entry requirements? Are they changing at all? So the entry requirements are as they are at the moment for September, this September, September 2020. We are currently reviewing our entry requirements for September 2021, and those will be published on the website shortly to coincide with the opening of application and the launch of the new prospectus. So hence why I said, please do keep looking at the website. Please do keep updating yourself as to those entry requirements but we would discuss those with students when they came to interview and make them aware of the individual entry requirements anyway. Thank you. Somebody's just a bit nervous about making new friends at college. I mean, Windsor's okay. very small and friendly, isn't it? It is, yes. I would say please don't be nervous about that. We have a number of students who come to us from a wide variety of feeders, often on their own. Um, and surprisingly, or not surprisingly, they're often the students who leave at the end of two years with the most friends. Um, even if you come with lots of other people that you know, the chances are that you might not necessarily be in the same classes as them. So I would say, please don't be nervous. There are a lot of opportunities for students to get to know each other. 
um, both through tutorial and in lessons. We do lots of activities and lots of events for students to socialise and get to know each other. We're working our way through how those are going to operate, obviously, in a COVID world. But we would always do our best to support any student who has individual concerns. And those things can be discussed with your subject teachers, with your personal tutor. There are quiet working spaces for those students who would prefer somewhere quieter to work. And obviously at Windsor, we have the social area. We call it the hub, um, probably because it's the hub of Windsor. It's where all the activity goes on. So a great space for getting to know people and making friends. Thank you. Um, what about induction? And someone is asking about the induction and first day at college. Um, okay. Do we know when induction is going to be and, and how so, it will run? OK, so more information about induction will be given to students at the point of enrolment. So again, I would ask for your forbearance in bearing with us while we work through how that's going to run and what that's going to look like. Induction sessions will be run during the week beginning the 7th of September, but specific details, I'm afraid, are still being confirmed. Again, I would refer you back to the fact that we are dealing with changing government guidelines on what we can and cannot do. We will certainly be inviting all students to come into the college or students that are joining us in September. Um, and we will be organising induction events for them in smaller groups and it will be spaced out over a longer period of time compared with previous years. But we will most definitely be having induction with students on site. But please bear with us while we sort out those details and that information will be given to students at the point of enrolment. Another um, COVID related question, quite an obvious one is will, will students have to wear masks? At the moment, we have made the decision that that is for students to make a personal choice. But again, I would refer you back to that, that we are working with changing government guidelines. The one thing I would say is that obviously those students that are travelling on public transport will need to know and be mindful of the fact that they will need to have that with them because obviously they, they won't be allowed to travel on public transport without that. Yes, I think the government guidance at the moment is for educational settings that you don't have to wear a mask, but you can no. choose to do so. But you do have to wear one on, on public Absolutely. transport. I, I think we, we recognise that some students may feel very nervous. But again, you know, the guidance is changing on a regular basis and we will continue to provide updates to parents and students via website and through our parent updates. And again, it's enrolment and induction if that guidance should change. Thank you. Um, I've got a question around uh, someone has said that they've taken a BTEC as well as GCSEs. Will the okay. BTEC grade count as one of the five grades between nine and four? It would count as one, providing it is a merit. Has to be a merit or above. But yes, it would count as one. Just an interruption there. When do, when do they have to make a definite decision about the courses they want to take? Um, ideally, at the point of in, the, the final point is really at enrolment. If students have already started to consider their core choices and are wanting to make changes now, I would ask that they contact admissions as soon as possible and register those changes so that we can make adjustments on the form and can be prepared. It will help us with our planning and with our preparation for both enrolment and induction. There will be a point at enrolment for students to discuss their programme study, which is obviously the optimum point because that is the point at which you will have your results. And that may very well make some decisions for students about which subjects they can or cannot pursue. Beyond that, however, there will be opportunities for students to undertake course changes. So if you start a programme study and you're not entirely sure it's the right one for you, there is an opportunity for a course change. And that may well be in discussion with your subject teachers as much as yourself. If actually what we find is you're not coping with the demands of the subject or it's really not for you. So it's a mutual discussion that takes place in that first half term. 
Another question about things like lunch breaks. Um, okay. Are they at different times? No, they're currently not. Um, but students have a very variety of timetables. So although the current college day runs from nine o'clock till four o'clock, not all students are in from nine till four. So some students may very well not have their first lesson until 10.45. Um, some students will have their first lesson at nine o'clock and be finished at lunchtime. So depending on the makeup of your timetable, depends on how many lessons you will have during the day, your start and your finish times. We do have a morning registration or an afternoon registration. Instead, we register in every single lesson that you are timetabled for. It means that we can track your attendance in each subject and on each day. Um, and that we find is much better for tracking students and for supporting them when there are issues emerging about attendance and punctuality. Thank you. Um, now, I don't know if you, you, you hope you do know the answer to this one. If not, I'll look it up. But um, the, the B -tech, what's the BTEC equivalent uh, level two equivalent to? Sorry, I don't understand. The, yeah, what is a BTEC level two equivalent to? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll ask. Oh, you. Um, it depends on the level of the qualification, the size of the qualification. So there are um, a number of different sizes with the level two BTECs. The two that we currently offer are designed as foundation years that then lead on to a level three area of study in that subject area. So those students undertaking a level two in creative media would progress onto a level three in creative media. Those students undertaking a level two, um, and it's actually a UAL qualification, which is the equivalent of a BTEC, progress onto either a level three in performing arts or a level three in art and design. So there are two pathways coming from that particular level two qualification. The GCSE science pathway is made up of GCSEs in biology, chemistry and physics alongside GCSEs in English and maths. And again, is designed to act as a foundation year for students to enable them to progress onto primarily a science pathway. There are some exceptional circumstances, but again, we would discuss those with individual students. Another travelling to college question um, around the earliest time we'd have to be at college. OK, again, that depends on your individual timetable and the plans, whatever we agree to have in place September. And at the moment, I'm afraid I can't give you any more details on that as things currently stand. Uh, but we are planning to try to avoid peak travel. We are. We? we are. We are planning to try and avoid peak travel, but it will depend on individual timetables and again on what we have in place for September. So I'm, I'm really sorry, I would ask for forbearance. We are doing the best that we can, but with changing government guidelines, it, it would be um, disingenuous of us to put something out that we then have to change or that we have to continue to look at. How long does it take normally to complete an A-level? Can it be longer than two years? No, no. Under very extreme circumstances which normally relates to um, a student's individual circumstances relating to health but no all a levels are two-year linear courses i'm afraid we don't run distance learning courses we do expect students to be in and attending um, we are not uh, we are not set up to support students not being part of our lessons in our community so I would make the distinction, I guess, between distance learning and remote learning. So at the moment we are delivering remotely by virtual classrooms, but we, we cannot and we do not support distance learning at the moment, I'm afraid. Got a question about English and maths. If we don't get, get that, is it possible to study that at the same time? Um, that would depend on the course that you have applied to do. So if it is our level two courses, absolutely. If it's a level three course, I'm afraid you may find that having one or the other impacts on the course that you can pursue. Certainly you can't embark on a level three course without 
GCSE maths and or English, and that would depend on the courses that you've applied for. Thank you. Still lots of questions coming in, which is great. Oh, fine. Absolutely fine. <laughs> um, what about trips and visits? Do you have to go on them? And um, is that something that's part of the programme? OK, so some are mandatory. So in other words, they are linked to the course. So the example I will give is A-level biology, where part of the assessment for A-level biology is linked to the completion of um, field work. And obviously that entails going away. So there are some subjects where the trips are mandatory. They're part of the college delivery, but most trips are optional. We would encourage students to go on them simply because it broadens your experience. Being a student and engaging and getting the most out of your studies is taking the most of the opportunities that are offered to you. All of the trips that we offer are linked to the curriculum and will add something to your experience. Whether that is giving you um, a greater breadth of understanding or knowledge about a particular subject, whether it's an experience, a different point of view. So we would always encourage students to make the most of those opportunities available to them, but no all trips are obligatory. Um, someone's also asked a question about bullying and, and I guess that comes under discipline as well at, at college. How do, how do we handle it? OK, um, it's a question really for the student support services. We have a student management process that is in place at the college, which is used two forks to it, I guess I would explain to her. So we have academic support and we have misconduct. We take bullying very, very seriously. Um, we have a very clear anti-bullying statement in place in the college and all students are made aware of that and of our expectations of students in terms of behaviour, mutual respect um, and the things that we do and do not tolerate at the very start of their journey with us, so as part of their induction. We ask all students to sign a code of conduct, an agreement that they have with us, and part of that will cover bullying. So you know, please be assured, we take it very seriously, we will investigate and we will deal with all matters that arise very seriously. If a student does have any concerns, we would encourage them to talk to their personal tutor, but obviously we have designated safeguarding leads and they also pick up on those issues. So there are a number of people at the college that students can go to talk to and we would highlight those people to them both as part of the action and throughout their journey with us at the college. Thank you. Um, another question around um, things like fairs and fates and activities. OK, um, we generally speaking during the year, we have a freshers fair, we have a Christmas event and we have a summer event. Um, they are often run by the students with lots of other people who come in. This year we've also had a campaign that was run by our student union executive, which was about promoting fitness. Um, I think it's uh, fair to say I'm not quite sure who got most competitive, the students or the staff in terms of who could do the most press ups or push ups or whatever it was in the least amount of time. So there are a number of group activities and we utilise the hub, as I said, the central space of our college for those events. So lots of things that go on for the students. Can students come and go um, on the campus? Can they go out to, for lunch and things like that? Yes, absolutely. Providing they are there and ending their lessons and that they are completing the work that is set. Yes, we would ask them obviously to be respectful of our local area. I think I said at the very beginning, we are on the high street. We are part of the community. Um, we value being part of the Windsor community and we ask our students to do the same. It's part of making us a successful sixth form is that we are mindful and respectful of others and that we behave in an appropriate way. So we would always ask our students to consider that and to bear that in mind when they are out and about in Windsor. A question about um, Duke of Edinburgh. Is there the opportunity to, to um, go for that? Currently, at the moment, we are looking to expand the Duke of Edinburgh service that runs Strode over to Windsor, and I have to have that in place for September. Thank you. A, f a, a, a few people have asked, would we be running any taster days in the summer? 
But I guess that's still up to the yeah. government guidance, isn't it? it? It is. I think it's, I have to be honest and say, I think it's highly unlikely at this point. I'm really very sorry. Um, for those of you who apply, have applied or are applying to start with us in September, um, on Monday is what would have been our welcome day for Windsor College and you will be able to go online onto our website and download a number of subject specific audio mp4s they are uh, powerpoints with audio and films attached to them which will give you an introduction to each of the subjects give you an overview a taster of how they're assessed, what you would be studying, and we'll also have some summer assignment work for you. So I would encourage anybody who is hoping to join us in September to take advantage of that. The other thing that will be available again, and it will be next week as part of our Welcome Day programme, will be virtual tours of the college. So again, an opportunity if you haven't managed to get through the doors to take a virtual tour around the college with our heads of department, our head of tutoring and our head of Windsor College, Mandy Francis. So those will be available shortly on the website for you to download and get involved with. And hopefully that will give you a taster of what it's like to be at Windsor. Uh, we'll also send those videos out to everybody that registered today, so you'll get them directly in your email. So, uh, a couple of questions around enrolment um, okay. and when that would normally start. OK, so enrolment is scheduled to start, I think, from the 25th of August. Again, that would be something that admissions manages. Students will be contacted individually with a specific day and time to come into Windsor. It's so that we can manage enrolment face to face, but obviously with current social distancing measures in place. Um, please bear with us. Admissions will be in touch with you shortly once those uh, things are in place and once we've got everything sorted out. It will be an individual invitation. And I can add in there that anybody who is a late applicant will be first of all given a online interview with one of the specialist teams. And then if we can offer you a place at the college, you will be invited in for your enrolment session so that it will follow that, that process. OK, I think probably just got one last question for you, which was is around um, train travel. Is there a discount or a fund to help with tra train travel? I believe there is. Um, if we could forward that or take that person's details, Fiona, and forward that to the student services team, they would be able to give more information about that. OK, I'll gather the email address and we'll reply to them. Apologies, I don't have that information to hand, but we can get that for you. I know there is a scheme, but more details and information about it we can find and we can forward on to you. I'll post a link to the transport page um, on the on the chat. Um, what about, um, sorry, one more question is coming okay. um, around uh, people that may have any uh, special needs or need any learning support. OK, so again, we would ask that you contact our learning support team directly. Uh, we have a specialist team in place at the glitch. There is in-class support for those students who need it. There is a separate area where students who need one to one support can go and all staff are made aware of individual needs of students if that is appropriate. If you have particular inquiries, please do get in contact with the department separately. If you would like to leave us your contact details now, we can ask them to contact you if that would be more suitable for you. Again, we're hoping that there will be a presentation up online next week from the learning support team. So please do log on and have a look at that. And then if you've got any other questions, you can get in contact with them. Um, Debbie Garcia is the name of the lady who oversees learning support at Windsor College. And I'm sure she would be more than happy to talk to anybody who has got an individual concern or question. Thanks very much. I think we have to end the session there because we're getting ready for our next session coming up. Um, but lots and lots of questions. If you have any more questions that you want to ask, please email marketing at windsor-forest.com.
www.ac.uk. I've put the link on the chat uh, and I'll also put the link to admissions on there. But thank you very much. Thank you, Amanda. That was very informative. And thanks everybody for being so actively involved today. Thank you very much, everybody. Look forward to meeting you all at Windsor, either this September or in the autumn term for one of our special open days. Stay safe and we look forward to seeing you soon. Good afternoon.